So this is what I'm thinking, starting out with just a simple tube that I did at the bottom of these four. About the size that I'm thinking this can be. So I'm grab an edge, I'm gonna hit ring, use connect to split it. It looks like the barrel is, uh, this part is a little bit thicker than the other part. So I'm going to move this one. This one shifts it down uh, to about there. So it seems like this is thicker than the other one. And I'm using the picture that you sent me uh, as reference to kind of give me an idea of you know what it should look like. So there, uh, and then there's like a straight straight line cut. Actually, I thought doing something like um, this was fine, but this actually needs to go straight down. It's almost like a, a vampire fang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these faces and I'm going to use the slice plane. What this does is it just creates a line all the way through and cuts a line. So if I move it past this little thing, you'll see the line shows up there, but not where I don't want it. So whatever you have highlighted, turn that on. And there you go. So I want this line to match up with this, so I am super picky. So I'm going to zoom in really damn close inside of here to about right there. And then I'm going to slice. Boom. And I can check that. And now that's there. Now the reason that I went so close, if I go into vertex mode, at so close, it automatically welds. Um, if you're not this close, it'll create a couple um, vertexes. You just select all of them and then just hit weld and same process. So I have that and I'm only gonna focus on just this part of the model. So I'm gonna delete those pieces because that's all I care about. So I have these uh, and then this part has to be raised up. So edge, ring, I'm gonna hold control and click on polygon and make all those faces and I'll hit extreme and that's fine. Probably shouldn't go that high. It seems fairly low, but sometimes you know you want to make these a little bit more noticeable. Uh, so that's good. And then I don't need this there. I don't need that there because when I weld all these, it'll go nicely. I need to grab. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna delete those. I'm gonna grab this guy, this guy, this guy. This guy, this guy, and the top. And then, actually, I only need this, because this is the part. Uh, yeah, these are gone. Actually, I just need to get rid of all these. Boom. So there's that piece. Because if I look at like this top down, I mirror instance that that way, grab these, mirror them, S. So you're going to get an idea of what I'm trying to see. So these edges I'm just going to extrude straight across. So grab that edge, that edge, that one, and that one, and we all the way this way. Now, I like to use a thing called symmetry, like you saw in the other video. This is just mirroring, so those are all separate objects. Pivot is still where I need it. So symmetry, cross, and the cool part is if these overlap, it automatically welds them for me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that goes there. And then I am left with this piece over here. I'm gonna grab this edge. And this edge and shift drag down to make sure that it's the same height. And then I'm going to weld these parts. 45, 44. Yep, that works. Um, and if I use another symmetry, the other way you see, flip, boom, there you go. You're getting the idea of what this looks like. But this needs to bevel a bit. And this is super low poly. 
again, I like to work really low and I add a bunch of um, bounding lines. So when I add a mesh smooth, it will run up really nicely. So if I add mesh smooth now, you'll see, bleh, this looks like crap. So what I'm going to do is go back into here. I'm going to add another edit poly because I like to go, you know, back down the stack. Uh, how is this? No. Ignore that. Um, so I have this, and then now I'm going to grab this edge, loop, and chamfer settings this, and have it go there. And it seems like this needs to go about right there. Now be careful when doing that, because you saw that I made it go right onto this edge. Technically there's overlapping, so if I move that, you see that. So the way to solve it is just grab all those vertexes, hit weld, threshold is so low that it automatically welds anything that close. And I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm not caring about the opposite side because I'm just going to grab both sides and uh, use another symmetry and match on the top. So something like this. So now, what I want to do is I want to start to make this all um, smooth nicely. So I'm going to grab these edges, ring, connect, two options, and then push oops, that one this way to separate them out and make them about that close. 99, probably about right, 98, about right there. And I want this ring. Now it doesn't go this way, so I gotta force it. So I gotta grab these guys and then like this, manually force it. So it's gonna create a little bit of illegal polygons, but in this case, ah, screw it. Connect option box. I don't want it to go that much, so about somewhere around right there. And I only care about these ones, I don't really care about these because I'm gonna get rid of these anyways. Maybe a little looks like that. Hit OK. I'm going to grab this loop and hit Control Backspace. Uh, if you just hit Backspace, you'll see the line goes away, but vertexes stay behind. That shit's nasty to clean up. So make sure Edge, Loop, Control, Backspace. Now, no vertexes. <coughs> then I'm going to grab this edge, ring, connect. I want all these lines to kind of be consistently similar. But sometimes they're not going to be. And then ring, this edge, ring. And thankfully that works nicely, so connect. And I want this to be not as tight like that, but somewhere like that. Connect. And now, when I add my mesh move, this is what I get. I'm going to add two iterations so it looks clean. And boom, there's that model. We get a little bit of funkiness right here. That's okay. Um, again, imagining that this thing is going to be printed so small, no one's going to notice that. If this was movie quality, I would spend more time to flatten this area. Oops, let me turn that mesh move off. To flatten that little area a bit more. But in this case, I think that works out totally, totally fine. Um, so I'm going to delete the mesh move from add the mesh move. Oops, up here. I just hit M, mesh smooth. Two iterations is usually pretty nice for printing uh, at a small scale. So I have something like this. Um, but I think on the original, this part of the model needs to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to grab all these points. Boom, boom. And thankfully, because of symmetry, whatever I do at the bottom does at the top. I'm going to move it down just a little bit more. Cool. Map that. And I'll just add a couple spheres that go about where it needs to be. Right there. Move it up. 
And when it comes to 3D printing, usually you're okay with just jamming stuff in like that. You're totally fine. So in this case, we get away with it. Uh, I'm going to add another edit poly. Grab all these faces. Shift, drag, over. So I get that. I think this may need to be a little bit farther away. And then again, um, I'm going to make the pivot match pivot of this object. So I hit the hierarchy, effect pivot only, align, click, and make sure X, Y, and Z are on. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Saw that little offset. Now it matches. Hit W, E, and R just to make sure. Sometimes it could be off. And then now we could run symmetry, symmetry, boom. Um, I think a real one, these spheres need to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to grab these and scale them up a bit. Maybe pull them a little bit further away. Something like that. And I'm happy with that. So now I have this guy, and I'm just going to symmetry him the other way. Boom. Like that. And the cool thing is I can affect the symmetry by opening this. Click on mirror. And now wherever I move, I can make it closer or farther. So if I make this closer together, cool. But be careful that I'm not affecting the outside of what to. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a thickness. Like that. And then I'm going to grab these and the symmetry. Uh, sorry about that. All right. I'm going to add edit poly. And actually, I can just click this and hit. Ooh, bridge doesn't work in this case. I'm just going to grab one side and extrude straight down to the other. You know what? I'm just going to delete this bottom part. I've given that some thickness. Now I run symmetry. I can move this manually myself and that now welds nicely and I have a thickness. Perfect. Now I'm going to make another one. Um, since I already had a tube of this anyways, I'm just going to hit Control v to make a copy. This I want to copy. Because <coughs> I'm going to delete all this stuff. So I have that. Add an edit poly. Push this stuff a little bit further out. I'm guessing kind of that's where the end of the barrel should be. Um, loop. Scale this in to about right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center the pivots on these things. Cool. And I want this to be the center. That. Make sure that's correct again. I clicked. Good, 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 good. Okay. And I'm going to flatten this to about right there. And that matches on both sides. So maybe give it just a little bit more of a thickness like that. Cool. I'm going to add ring connect. I'm going to give this a bit of uh, a border. I'm not too sure on what the outside of this build looks like. So I'm kind of cheating. Oops, missed down here. Ring. Connect. I'll do negative. And then these edges. Control. Click on polygon. Move this up. Hit extrude. Goes on both sides. I'm cool with something like that. Again, I'm not sure what the correct outer looks like, but I'm just winging it, so don't kill me. Um, and now, 
all I'm going to do is, I don't need this edge, so that was an extra loop control backspace to get rid of it. From here, I'm going to grab all these guys and just scale only in the y-axis, flatten them, and grab those, keep that. And because it's inside of this, I'm not going to even see it. This can actually stay nice and low. That's in there. Boom. Grab these guys. Same thing. Nice and flat. Uh, and again, like I said, I always add a mesh smooth on top of my stuff. Something like that. We get a little bit of this kind of softening a little too much. If I move this up, you'll see. So I need to add border edges in there. So we'll grab edge, ring, connect, option box. I'll click by two, check this to zero, move this to outer. So that keeps it a little bit more contained. It gives me a little bit of a shape for this outer ring. There we go. I'm going to change all this to the same color. Not like it would really matter, I guess. But there it is. I don't think you need to uh, put glass in here um, or put a geo in here. If you wanted to, you can easily uh, take this, invert it, and have the perfect uh, fit and maybe use a translucent material or cast translucent material for this piece to easily slide inside. Um, however you want to do it, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you. But um, that looks like that is it from what I can see. Enjoy.